people of YouTube, rise to your feet, for he has returned, the seeker of truth, giver of facts, the lord of the deep dives, I give you the gale. That'll do, Alfred. You embarrass me with your introductions. What's up, guys? It's me, your boy, the gale, here with another VV video. And today's video is going to be a little different. About two weeks ago, I think I made a strategy video, my strategy video, giving you guys the things that I'm doing. And I thought that I would do that again, because uh, two weeks later, some things have changed, some things haven't. But I just wanted to um, just go over that with you guys, of what I'm currently doing while the marketplace is closed for me. And um, yeah, while we're still in beta and people really haven't caught on to us just yet i'm talking about mainstream so i think first things first uh in terms of myself i have to ask myself what do i want to be in the vv community um there's a couple of things that you can be you can be a collector you can be a flipper you can be here just for fun you can just you can be here to um there's a lot of reasons to be on the VV app, but first I got to ask myself, what do I want to be? And I think I label myself as a collector. I'm definitely going to take part of that master collector program when it comes out. I have a lot of Omi and I definitely plan on staking it because I don't plan on selling it anytime soon. So I might as well stake it for, for um, access to early drops and exclusive drops and stuff like that. So me being a collector... My strategy right now, what I'm doing is, you guessed it, collecting. So if I can click on my collectibles here, let me go down here then. <clears throat> so let's go to the Ice King real quick. So I recently acquired him from somebody, um, I w like I'm always looking, I'm on Instagram, I'm in the telegrams, and I'm always, also I'm in the feed, the VV feed right down here and when i see somebody selling something that i want i'll inquire about it and basically what i'm looking for right now since we're still early i'm looking for low mints uh low additions right here so that's obvious to people who who know what they're doing but <clears throat> if you're new to this and you don't know what you're doing right here the lower the mint the more rare the nft so let's go to the latest drop which was the delorean so as you can see here well let's go to the common that'll be better so as you can see here the mint is fifty thousand. so i don't think ikomi was planning on making the mint this big but because of the growth of uh vivi and ikomi they had to make it as big um, and it was a good idea that they did because a lot more people were happy with this drop because they were able to get an NFT. If they would have kept it to the normal 9,000, a lot of people would have been unhappy and unhappy people is not good for a new, um, for a new app in beta. But, uh, like I was saying, I'm going for low mints or low, yeah, low mint editions because, uh, 3,000 might seem big now. So people who don't know, you know, what's going on here, but in the future, 3000 is going to be like an ultra rare. I mean, it's already an ultra rare, but, um, so like if you look at Tropicana right here, she has 5,000 and that's about 2000 more than 3000, obviously, but even Tropicana being a, a normal rare, she's going to be qualified. She's going to be classified as an ultra rare as well in the future. Now, these are all of my opinions, but. As I see it, that's the way that things are going. I like to refer to NBA Top Shots when I uh, talk about mints because that was my first introduction to NFTs. And what I noticed over there was that a lot of um, <clears throat> Series 1 um, moments, that's what they call their NFTs, moments, they rose up exponentially in value because they were the first on the platform and... Because they were first on the platform, they were much harder to get. Just like this uh, Brian Bollard right here. I was only able to get one of him 
when I first got on the platform. Or well, actually, I was able. To, I was. I had the potential to get multiples, but I bought one, and then as I was learning about the um, about Ecomi and stuff, I was like, "Wow, maybe I should get two. And by the time I went to go get two, he was gone. So I learned my lesson too late on Brian Bollard, but um, I'm not making that same mistake anymore. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm getting low mints. I just got two lumpy space princesses. If I can uh, go to her right here. I got them for good deals too. You also want to make sure you're getting a good deal on your um, NFTs. So speaking, of, so while I'm on that topic, I want to shout out my guy, Butt Thompson again. I, I watch his videos daily. What he does is he goes to eBay and looks at the currently or recently sold prices and stuff. But uh, what makes him different from anybody else who's going to do it is that he has a spreadsheet that he updates um, often. And I use those spreadsheets a lot to calculate the estimated value of my uh, portfolio. And let's just go to you or eBay real quick. So we're on eBay now, and in the on, in the search bar up here, I typed in VV Mojo Jojo. I like to type in VV first, and then whatever I'm looking for, just to be specific, it'll take you right there. And as you can see, a lot of these are going for four to five hundred dollars, three to three to five hundred dollars. Here's a six hundred dollar one. But what I do, what I like to do is I go over here to the filter right here, and then I click on sold items so let's do that right here i hit the sold items toggle and that'll show me what's been recently sold so because i don't have access to the marketplace i like to gauge what these are selling for right now so i got a i got a great deal because i got mine for 200 from somebody who i, I was talking to and um yeah, you want to come over here to see what they're going for so you don't make a bad deal or a bad trade. So this is what I do before I even start to talk to people about trading so I can have an idea of what price range I'm willing to buy it at. So yeah, that's that's how I do my eBay price searches. So my second strategy that I'm doing right now while we're still in beta is I'm trying to complete as many sets as I can as affordably as I can. So the last um, drop that we had was the DeLorean drop. So the quickest way to complete sets is to participate in the drops and buy everything that you can while it's at the uh, mark while it's at the store price. The store price is static, and those prices will never change. When they set a price, that's going to be the price. But as soon as they sell out, they can triple to quadruple or more as soon as they sell out, depending on the item. So it's going to be a lot harder to complete sets financially if you don't have the money like that, which a lot of us don't. So I uh, recently completed the Mermaid Corno Series 1 set. I was able to get um, Cora, Serena, Oceana, Gelatina during the drop. So I had to, I had to trade a few pieces to get Marina, Perla, and, and Tropicana. And I actually had to buy Corsica for like quadruple the price of the drop. So I only bought her because I was cuz that mean that meant I was able to complete the set. Um <clears throat> I believe completed sets are going to be worth a lot in the future, especially series 1, which this Mermaid Corno is. This is a series 1 and first appearance. So the way you can check that out is right here when it, when it says FA that means first appearance. And then series one is uh, the first series of a of a brand or a set. So I actually have I actually have two full sets of Murmur Corno uh, series one. So I'm I'm kind of building leverage right now as well. I kind of like to think of this as a chess, and certain pieces are worth more than the, than uh, other pieces. <clears throat> so this Ultraman Ace right here, he's pretty he's probably like a rook. I really don't want to get rid of him, but if I have to, I will trade or sell him to get a better piece. So let's go down to, um, let's go down to, um, let me see. So Cora, I have about 14 of her because I got some on accident during the drop, 
But right now, Cora, Cora is like a pawn. I hate to say it like that, but she's a pawn. I'll include her in like a two for one trade if I have to, or I'll sell like four to get more gems to buy something better. Because even though she's a series one member corno, uh, she has 9,000 additions, which is, it used, it used to be a lot, but now I think that's actually, a, that, that's actually kind of a, that's, that's creeping into, um, uncommon to rare territory because if the drops keep increasing like 12,000 and 50,000 like they just did for the DeLorean 9,000 is going to be pretty rare so for now she's a pawn but I might actually have to keep Korra now that I think about it it just depends on the situation so my point was that I'm trying to complete sets while I can while they're still affordable while people still don't understand where this is going a lot of people are trying to offload their NFTs for whatever reason, I guess because they are not they don't see themselves as collectors or they don't understand the value of what they have right now. It's always been my opinion that everything available while in beta is a long-term hold because, like I said before, the additions are low and you're not. it's going to be so much harder to get once um, people start to realize what these NFTs are and where we're going with this. So, um, yeah. So yeah, that's basically my strategy with uh, VV right now. Um, I haven't, I personally haven't really seen an opportunity like this when it comes to crypto or in general, where we can get in early and you know have a have a big opportunity to do something with it. So my goal is to kind of become a, a whale or like a big player on this platform. I don't come from a lot of money, but luckily I had some money available around the time that I heard about VV, so I was able to get some collectibles and stuff and start my collection. I just, I see this going, I see this becoming a huge app and a huge big deal. So I'm just trying to get my foot in the door and I'm trying to build a foundation for myself. So when the masses come and stuff, you know, I'm more informed, I'm well, well informed. I can, you know, I have more leverage and stuff regarding collectibles and I just, I want to become i want to see what i what i can do with vv you know it of course financials is the motive like if these weren't if these weren't going to be worth anything i really wouldn't be buying them if i didn't see the value going up in them i wouldn't be purchasing them i like to use my time wisely and financial freedom for me is always the goal but once i attain that financial freedom i hold other cryptos as well so while those are growing i can have fun with my nfts which are also investments. So it's like a win-win. I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm having fun with something innovative as well as investing and, you know, changing my life for the better. Because nobody wants to work all their life, right? I can't be the only one who, who thinks that or believes that. So yeah, I want to be, become a big player within the NFT VVverse. And I want to be able to set myself up financially where I can trade NFTs for a living. How cool would that be to be able to trade NFTs and also you know, tell people or teach people how to do the same thing. There's so many opportunities these days. 2021, this world is a is a crazy place. And a lot of people, technology is allowing a lot of people more freedoms than they were ever afforded back in the day. We really don't have to leave the house to make money if we know what we're doing out here. So with that being said, I just wanted to touch on my YouTube channel for a bit. So... I initially started with NBA Top Shots, as you can see down here, but I kind of came in late to the party, and a lot of the moments were very expensive, so I kind of like, you know, started looking elsewhere, and that's when I found uh, Vivi and Nikomi. So when I find something interesting, I do a lot of research, and I just thought to myself, since I'm doing all this research, I might as well make videos on it and share it with other people, because back in my early crypto days, that's all I did was I watched YouTube videos from other people who were doing the research and decided to share it. So, so like I'm an XRP guy and I watched a lot of XRP videos and I really appreciated the knowledge that they were sharing with me because I didn't have the time or I did have the time, but I just didn't really feel like reading all those articles because I wasn't super interested in XRP, but I was willing to watch other people talk about their research. So this is the same thing I'm doing with the Comey. I always wanted to do a YouTube 
YouTube channel, but I was never really passionate about any of the things, passionate enough to make the videos and take the time to make them, whatever. But with Ecomi, I'm very excited and bullish, as I say at the end of all my videos. And uh, I'm so bullish that I have the time, I'll make the time and energy to make videos and share them. So basically what I want my channel to be is like a one-stop shop for Ecomi news, or not news, but like information. So like if somebody wanted to learn everything about Ecomi, all they would have to do was come to my, come to my channel. So that's my thing. But like if you guys wanted to make a channel, it's still early. Like it's, it's so early in the game that you just find your niche. Like what, if you, if you're an information guy, then do that. If you want to talk about the prices, like my guy, Butt Thompson, do that. If you just want to document your journey, there's a lot of people who are just willing, who will be interested in just seeing your process and what are you doing and what are you buying and how's it working out for you? So there's so many topics. Like if you're, if you want to live stream, you can do that. There's so many areas that you can just um, start a channel on. If, if you're the type that feels like you've been always wanted to make content and just see where it goes. So, um, yeah, I'm also going to be documenting my journey on my YouTube channel so I can look back and other people can look back and say, oh, wow, that's how it used to be. And this is what it is now. So I think that will be pretty cool. You know, I don't really have a expectation with this channel. I'm just making it because that's what I feel like doing. So that's that was just for anybody who feels like they they feel like they can start, start a channel, but they've been hesitating for whatever reason. Like there's no pressure like there's you know just get out there and do it if you want so with that being said i am not a financial advisor even though i've been in crypto for about four years now i still have no idea what i'm talking about because i'm not a financial advisor i'm just a guy with a lot of opinions and i am hyper bullish on ecomi and vv and omi and i look forward to seeing what they have for us this week hopefully the marketplace for me can open up that'd be great and I can't wait to see what the final version of this app looks like. Like, it's it's kind of super cool right now while it's in beta. I just I just can't wait until they come out with the games and the collector master collector program and the staking and all of that. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting, especially for people who are heavily invested in it. I hope it goes the way that I think it's gonna go. But if it doesn't, it's been a fun ride. But it but yeah. Time will tell. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for um, thanks for watching. Peace out, guys, and good luck.